Hello there and welcome to Can Sanity. Today we're going to make one of my favorite pickled pepper recipes. And I was really happy that I was able to get out to one of my favorite farms to pick up local bell peppers. Now, I like to buy local whenever I can and I love buying bell peppers at this time of the year because they're nice and large, they're firm, and they're thick walled. And so now in order to prepare the peppers for this recipe you need to peel them and when they're thick walled and firm they uh, stand up well to roasting and that's how I peel my peppers so I'm going to slice these peppers up and get them ready for the oven. I've cut up most of my peppers and uh, now I just want to show you that this is uh, a pepper that's halved and you can see how thick walled that is and that's what you want. And so you're going to take that and quarter it. And then what I like to do is I cut off a bit of the end so that that pepper will sit nice and flat on a surface. And that way when you're roasting it in the oven, you're roasting the whole um, outer surface. If, if it's wobbly and sitting up like this or sitting up like that, you're going to end up just roasting one side of the pepper. And you want as much of that skin to be roasted and blistered because that's going to make it easy to peel. So I'm going to just finish cutting up these peppers and then I'm going to put them in a, a 450 degree Fahrenheit oven and I'm going to roast them for 20 minutes. Now check on them after 15 minutes. If they're well blistered and even blackened, then it's time to take them out. My oven is set now to 450 degrees Fahrenheit and so I will put this in the oven. Now I put it at the top third of the oven and rather than in the middle and um, I will watch that and rotate it halfway through if, if it looks like the back half of the pan is roasting faster than the front half. So I'll set my timer for 20 minutes and I will check it after 15 and I will um, look for it to, the peppers to have blisters, black spots and uh, then when that's when it looks like that then it's time to take it out. Okay so I've taken the uh, peppers out of the oven and you can see that some have blackened spots but not all, that's okay. Um, you'll see that it's all nice and wrinkly and that's good. That means that that skin is, once it cools it will, a bit, it'll come away from the uh, flesh. So what I do is I take those out and then I put them in a casserole. And I let that um, cool for a bit before I um, take the peels off. And so we'll probably I'll let it cool for about 10 minutes. Um, and I actually put the lid on this casserole and let it steam a little bit even more. I put it a jar though. It doesn't have to be a firm seal. Now, alternatively, you don't have to put this in a casserole. You could put this in a um, in a brown paper bag. And if you put it in a brown, clean brown paper bag, it won't steam, and so it won't cook anymore. And, and so that's that's okay too. So I I just have a large. Corningware casserole, so this is what I use. And so now when I roast up peppers like this, this is a, this tray, which fits the whole um, uh, interior of my uh, oven, will be about four pounds of peppers. Um, so I like to roast up two trays so that I do um, one batch after another. And um, if you end up, I always look at it this way, if you roast up more peppers than what you need, you can always eat them, put them on sandwiches, or you can um, freeze them. So I always just roast up a ton of peppers and uh, whenever I'm making this recipe, so I have extra. So while my peppers are steaming, um, I'm going to cut up the hot peppers that go into this uh, pickled pepper. Now you need one and a half pounds of sliced pepper and I like to slice my peppers in rings and I like these pickled peppers to be hot so I like this portion of the recipe to be hot peppers so I like to use habaneros, jalapenos and for color I'll add in some uh, banana peppers if I have them so I, this is one that I picked out of my garden 
and so I'll add that and I've already sliced up a couple, um, uh, some other um, yellow bananas in there as well. Now this is a sweet pepper and um, but I'm adding it for color and now if you don't want to make your pickled peppers hot then you can just use uh, sweet peppers and so when you're picking up peppers at the farmers market pick up a nice uh, variety of colors orange red and yellow and and that you'll see when the peppers get put into the jar how it looks so pretty when there's lots of color and so now to slice up the jalapeno um, I just slice off the end and then I have a jalapeno core and uh, it's a great gadget to have if you like to make things with um, uh, hot peppers like jal jalapenos and so to core all you do is you stick it in and give it a turn and then just pull and out comes the core. Now I, I don't put the seeds in my um, in, in the jars as well because I find that when by putting the uh, habaneros in there that's nice heat and so I don't need to add the seeds. So now when you um, go to slice it, slice it about a quarter inch in thickness for the wings and then for the habanero what you do is you just slice off the end and to core a habanero is easy you just need to um, just uh, go around with a knife and then, then you can reach in and, and pull out the seeds. Now, if you're cutting up hot peppers, make sure that you're using gloves because um, you don't want to get any of that oil on any on your skin because it'll give you a chemical burn. And so uh, make sure that when you're cutting hot peppers that you use gloves. And then I'll do the same for cutting up the habaneros and I'll cut it into rings. Now, it has these beautiful red habaneros, but uh, you know, they come in orange, red, and green, and so you know, you can also add a nice variety of color to these pickled peppers by picking up a variety of color of habaneros. The jalapenos also um, will turn red, but I like to save all my red jalapenos, and I like to use my red habaneros too for my hot pepper jelly. So I use the green jalapenos for, for this pickled recipe. So I'm going to continue on and finish chopping up my um, hot peppers until I have one and a half pounds. So this is my second batch of uh, peppers that I've taken out of the oven and I just want to show you that you don't need to put it in a casserole. You could also just use the tin foil. This is pretty hot so I'm just using my oven gloves. Um, so you can just take the ends of the, of the tin foil and you can just wrap the peppers up and have them steam in the foil. Um, just kind of turn them in like that and I'll just take these off so I can tuck these peppers in there. And you can just have them steam on the tray like that. Okay, so I'm just uh, um, peeling my peppers and the peppers that are blistered uh, well and have the black and they're going to peel super easy and the peppers that are not as um, blackened but you still see lots of wrinkled they might not peel as easily but as you can see I can still get my finger under there and, and, and pull up the skin and peel that off. Now um, if you end up having a couple peppers that don't peel super easy you can use a little paring knife and, and pull the, pep the skin off that way but um, it is important that you know you keep in mind that you roast these peppers so that you can get the skin off but you don't want to roast them so that they're they're super mushy so you still want them to be um, somewhat firm and so if you end up with a little bit of skin on a few peppers that's okay uh, it's better to have that than to have um, some peppers that um, that are, are really mushy. So um, I'm almost done with this batch, but I'm just going to show you. So there, here's one that's, you know, not super blackened, but it's a little bit black. And you see, I can just lift it up and pull the skin off, nice and easy. And so now I'm just going to put this aside for a minute. I'm almost done this this bowl. But I'm just going to show you what the other um, 
the other the other batch looked like looked like so this here it's it's nice and blackened and if I went to peel that one into this bowl let's say then uh, you know it's gonna peel a little bit easier I think because it, I did cook that so that it was a little bit uh, darker and so you can see how that peels really nice. Now I like to slice my my peppers so that they're a little bit smaller than this. You could put them in your um, jars that that large but I like to give them a slice and then that's about the size that I, I like to do. So in fact if I slice it first then I can see how you know you can easily pick up the peel that way. So now when I'm peeling my peppers I make sure that I keep you know one bowl separate from the other so that I have the right ratio of sweet peppers to hot peppers in my in my batches um, but it, you know you can see this this part would be, doesn't take very long to take the peels off and now you'll see that there's some blackened parts on your peppers that just adds flavor to the um, the pickle so don't uh, worry about that if you have a little bit of blackened parts on your on your peppers because that just adds to a nice charred flavor and so yeah this one's a little bit a little bit sticky but that's okay if I have a little little bits it's not bad you don't want the whole skin to be on there because the texture won't be right for the uh, the pickled pepper and so I'm just going to continue on and finish peeling all these peppers. So all my peppers are peeled and now I'm going to just make up the brine. So the brine is just one and a third cup of water and six and a half cups of cider vinegar. And I like to use organic cider vinegar if I can find it. And this is the brand that I use. And then you're going to add four teaspoons of pickling salt now you can use pickling salt or kosher salt today I decided to use pickling salt and then you're going to add two-thirds of a cup of sugar and then you're going to add three whole garlic cloves now my garlic was huge so I cut the cloves in half and you're going to Put that in your brine and you're going to bring this up to a boil and then simmer it for 10 minutes and um, if the uh, the cloves of garlic are cut up a little bit if they're large then it's just going to have more surface area to infuse that flavor into your brine and you're going to remove the garlic when you're uh, done so uh, bringing this up to a boil and, and cooking it so um, keep the uh, garlic Whole, but if they're large you can cut them in half. So now I'm going to put that on the stove and bring that up to the boil and simmer it for 10 minutes. Okay so I just took my jars out of my hot oven. Um, they were in the oven at 225 for uh, Fahrenheit for 10 minutes and so they're hot and uh, sterile now and um, I removed my garlic already out of my brine and so I'll just put that there, just put the garlic aside. And I have my ladle and my spoon and my funnel and any, any utensil that I'm going to use in hot boiling water. So just, just to make sure that that stays sterile as well. And so I have gloves on because I am going to be touching the hot peppers. And so I'm going to start on this side because I like to use one of these kind of wide mouth jars as well as some of the regular um, uh, jars. So now what you're going to do is you're going to add um, some hot peppers and some um, uh, some bells and you're just going to mix them up. So what I like to do is I like to put a few hot peppers on the bottom and I fill at least five jars. So I start with the five and I will actually I'll do six. And so I'll make sure that some hot peppers are at the bottom. And so that's one, two, three, four, five, six. And then throw a couple happy nails in the bottom of this one. And 
just it's nice when you have a, a mix and it's not all uh, one kind of pepper on, on, each, on one level. And so then you take your peeled um, roasted peppers and you throw a couple in uh, there. And you don't necessarily need to use the funnel because these are big pieces that you're you're doing. And so I like to make sure that I have a little bit of color, different color on, on the bottom. Now you can take your sterile spoon and you can just give it a little bit of make sure that you pack them in and so you want to make sure that you can see those colors too. So um, then I put keep going keep filling. Again with a mix of the colors at the bottom. And then, then you go around again and put another layer of hot peppers. And again, if you don't want to use hot peppers, that's fine. You can use sweet um, peppers, but uh, pick peppers that have that size so that when you slice them, they're rings. So you have different uh, type of pepper in the um, jars. And uh, you already have the, the slices of the hot peppers, the bells. So or sorry, the, the sweet peppers, the bells, so make the, uh, the if you are going to use sweet peppers, then pick peppers that are half the, this uh, size. So um, the sweet bananas, and then you can get shepherds and uh, other peppers like that. Okay, so uh, then I'm just going to continue on, and I'm going to continue to layer until I'm about within an inch of the top of the jar. And then I'm going to add the brine, and then I'm going to pack it down a little bit tighter. You want to get in as many peppers as you can. So I'm going to continue filling, filling and uh, then we'll pick up the video when I'm about to put the brine in. Okay, so while I was uh, filling my, pep my jars with peppers, I uh, turned my canning pot on so that it gets to a full rolling boil and it will take about 15 minutes for your canning pot to come up to boil, so make sure you do that. So you can see how pretty that already looks and so I've, I've kind of packed them in pretty tight, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some broth, or sorry, some brine, and um, then I'm going to let it sit for a bit, and then I can probably pack in some more of the hot peppers at the very top. And so I'll take my sterilized ladle, and I will ladle in. I won't fill it to the top. I'll fill it about three quarters of the way up because that hot liquid will cause the, um, the, the peppers that were not cooked to, shrimp, to soften a bit and so that I can add some more um, peppers. And so now this is hot brine and so you want to make sure that your brine is hot and you want to do this relatively quickly because you want to make sure that your jars are Hot, and the brine will keep it hot so that when you go to put them into your boiling water canner you're not putting a cold jar into your boiling water canner. If um, you do that you run the risk of having your jars bust open and so um, always try to keep your brine nice and hot so that when you go to um, put, fill them and then seal them that you know your jars will stay intact. So then I take a plastic utensil and I just get out the air bubbles at the bottom. So bring that utensil right down to the bottom of your jar and just press in on the sides and make sure that you get out all the air. And then so I'll do that for all the jars and then I'll add some more peppers because I still have some and I know that this will shrink down a bit and so now I want to fill the jars the, the brine will come to within a half an inch of the top of the jar and that will be that half inch head space so I am pretty close to full on the number of peppers but I 
I do think that I could squeeze in some more because um, these will shrink down a little bit with that hot line. And so, and then I, after I add more peppers and add more brine, I'm still going to have to make sure that there's no air because you'll see when you do this pickle that the peppers, the, the um, roasted bells are, um, they're, they're, they, there's potential for gaps in the jar and so that's uh, a, an area where there might be air pockets. So I'm just filling it up a little bit more before I add my, um, my peppers, my, my, the rest of my pickled peppers, the rest of my hot peppers. And so, let's get that, press that down. And if I have to take out some brine, I will. You want to get this as tightly packed as you can get it. And so I actually put in just a little bit too much brine in some of these, but that's okay. I'll just take it out. And so again, I'm using gloves because I'm touching these hot peppers and I don't want to get that on my skin because it will burn and I don't want to have a chemical burn. So I just use my my gloves for this. You can hear my boiling water can <laughs> boil away. And so it looks like I have done this very well because I hardly have any peppers left. It's fantastic. just have to put some on this one and then I will debubble again, run the um, my plastic utensil around and make sure that there's um, no air in the jar around the peppers and then I will fill the brine up so that I have half an inch of head space. Okay so my jars are filled and I used every last pepper and I got six uh, 500 mil jars and so 500 yeah, milliliter jars <laughs> and so I'm just going to I just have a um, paper towel where I've dampened with hot boiling water and I'm just uh, cleaning the top the rims of the jars because if there's a seed up there or even just some of the broth it might prevent the seal so make sure that you wipe down the jars and while I'm doing that, I'm just going to pop my, my snap lids into boiling hot water. And I just uh, put them in there for 30 seconds to a minute just to soften the seal. And then I am able to put the, uh, the snap lids on. And so I just need to grab my magnetic wand. And I can hear my boiling water uh, in my canning pot boiling away and so all the rims have been wiped down and I'll just grab my magnetic wand and take my rings out or my snap lids out and then I just use my um, my finger just to hold it down in the center and don't touch the edges you want to keep it as sterile as possible and so I'll put the the snap lids on. Okay, I'm just putting my, my rings on just a fingertip tight. So if you have any rings that are bent, don't use them because it might prevent your seal. And so now my, my rings were sterilized in my oven along with my jars. Two more jars left to put the rings on. And now we'll move over to the candy pot and put them in the water. Okay, so I'm just gonna put them in the water, grab them by the neck, 
and put them in uh, the pot and, and keep them one inch away from the side of the pot as well as one inch away from each other. Now I will wait it until that comes back up to a full rolling boil. Now this canning pot has an indicator on it, so when it goes into the green, that's telling me that the steam is hot enough and it's uh, time when I can set my timer and I'm going to uh, process this for 15 minutes. But the other indicator is that the, there's steam coming out of the steam vents and if you have the traditional uh, canning pot, one of those black enamel pots, uh, when the steam is coming out the sides, then, then you know that it's at a full rolling boil. And so I just have to wait for that to come to a full rolling boil, and then I'll set my timer for 15 minutes. Okay, so I just wanted to show you what it looks like when it's at the full um, rolling boil, and you can see steam coming out the sides and out of the steam vent, and my indicator is in, in the green. So I've set my timer for 15 minutes. Okay, so my timer went off. I shut my element off and I reset the timer for five minutes. Um, because there's a lot of liquid in these jars, you want to um, do this step where you shut the pot off and you just let the, the boil come down slowly and leave the lid on and uh, let the time uh, where the jars will sit in the water for five minutes. That prevents uh, wa uh, liquid from seeping out from underneath the jars when you take them out of the canning pot. So I process them in the water bath for 15 minutes, shut off the element, and then set the timer for five more minutes. Okay, so my timer just went off, so I'll take the jars out. And you want to grab them by the neck, not by the ring. Don't worry about the water on top. You don't have to tilt it over to get the water off. It will just evaporate. I'm going to need to add a little bit more water to this pot for my next batch, so I'll do that now so that um, I can get it back up to a uh, rolling boil for the next batch. Okay, so I've processed my six jars and I need to um, fill, put the brine in um, for these six jars. And so I'll just uh, have my funnel in boiling water there just to keep it sterile and I have a ladle also in there. And so I'm just going to fill this to three quarter like I did with the first. And then I'll, I'll debubble, run my, um, my plastic utensil around and take out the air. And then I'll fit in the rest of the peppers. And now I have one jar that hasn't sealed yet, and if I have just one jar that hasn't sealed, that's fine, we'll eat it because we love to put these pickled peppers on sandwiches or burgers, and so we are having steak for dinner tonight, so I'll make steak sandwiches tomorrow with roasted pickled peppers on top, it would be fantastic. 
but uh, if I end up with two jars that haven't sealed after I've done this batch, I might be tempted to process at least one of them again because I, I really want the pickles for the winter or I want to be able to give them away as gifts and so um, I do want to have it canned. So but like I said, one jar, that's fine, we'll eat that up. And, uh, but if it's more than one jar that doesn't seal, then, then I'll just reprocess. And when I reprocess, I pop the lid off, I um, check the, um, the level of the broth because that's often the reason why a jar won't seal properly. And so then I'll, I'll add more, more brine. And uh, so that's often the reason why I have to reprocess. And I always use a new snap lid and a new, uh, a different ring, just in case it had something to do with that snap lid or ring. So now I'll just run my utensil around and I'll just press right in on the peppers just because there's all kinds of opportunity for there to be air in there. And so I'll run that all the way around. Now I took the garlic out of the brine and I put it to the side there because you don't put the garlic in with the peppers. Um, it's not necessary for flavor. You have a lot of flavor with the peppers. Um, so I actually save the garlic or use some of the garlic and I make a nice salad dressing because that um, garlic has just been pickled a little bit with the cider vinegar and so I'll, I'll pick a, a salad dressing that I want to make and I won't throw it away because you know, that will add a nice flavor to a salad dressing. And, or if you were going to uh, do a stir fry or um, you wanted to use um, some garlic in with uh, uh, some, say you're sauteing up some garlic to just add to some nice green beans. Um, you can use your garlic that has um, been cooked in the brine and so yeah don't don't feel that you have to discard that okay so that's been that I ran that around once and now I'm just gonna top it and then then I'll add the rest of the the peppers that I have inside I won't bring it all the way up to the top because I'm gonna add more peppers and and then that's gonna displace the broth the brine I keep calling it broth it looks like broth, but it's brine. Um, and so you want to make sure that you have the room for the peppers. And so I don't have very many peppers left, as you can see. So I'm just going to, you know, this jar was a little low. And you really want to pack your peppers in again tight. That might be one of the reasons also why that jar didn't seal. Is there wasn't just a little bit, it wasn't packed tight enough. And so, um, I've done this recipe many times, and you, I very seldom don't get six jars of um, pickled peppers, and you'll end up with a lot of brine left over uh, from the first batch. I almost put it somewhere. I almost have um, four cups of brine left over, and and that also you can use for um, for making um, salad dressing or for. for for some other um, recipe that you have um, that you want to put some uh, vinegar in. Now I can tell by, by pressing down on this that I have room for some more peppers and so I, I know that I, I, I want this to be as full as possible so I'm going to, I have some poblanos that I just went out and picked from my garden so I'm just going to take a minute and I'm just going to slice a few more of those up and I'm just going to pop those in there as well. Okay, so three of my jars didn't seal. So one from the first batch and two from the uh, last batch. So I'm just going to take the rings off and take a look at the level. And I can see right away that this is, you know, way down. Now that's going to happen. Some of the um, liquid is going to siphon out. And so um, I'll just top that up and I'll reprocess it and hopefully it will seal. 
same with this one. This one's way down. Now I'm not going to reuse those rings just or those snaplets just in case it has something to do with that. I'll I'll wash those snaplets though and I'll use them for just um, storing uh, something that I uh, like. A, like when I only end up with half a jar of jam, and I, I I'll just use, reuse that ring for storing in the fridge. So I sterilize my funnel and my ladle again and I don't think I'm going to need my funnel but I'll I'll just top this brine up oh, raw brine <laughs> brine up to uh, half of uh, an inch from the top again and then I will soften the seals the same way that I did initially new seals that's to the half inch and then I'll, I'll wipe down the rims again it's possible that a seed um, got up in, into that into the um, onto the rim when it was processing and that prevented the seal so I'll just wipe those down again I'm just going to get my glasses to make sure that I have the half inch. Okay, so I have my glasses and it's a good thing I went and grabbed them because this one needed a little bit more to bring it right up to the half inch. That's good. And okay, so now I'll, I'll stick my three lids into my boiling hot water again or my new lids into my boiling hot water. And I'll just let it soften the seal for 30 seconds. You don't want to leave it in there too long because you don't want the seal to break down, but you do want it to soften. And I have my water bath on um, behind me and I can hear that it's a full rolling boil. Just a fingertip tight again. Okay, so now I'll just put those in the water bath and process them for another 15 minutes and then shut off the pot and uh, then put the timer on for another five minutes and then I'll remove the jars. Okay, so I put the jars in to reprocess, but because I only have three in there, I'm gonna make sure that there's, I'm gonna put a, an empty jar in the center and that just helps uh, keep these jars from tipping over uh, during the processing. And because I've processed three times, I want to make sure that I have at least an inch above the, um, the, the jars. And I have a mark here that's an inch on here, and I'm well below that. So I, I know that I have at least an inch of water above the um, jars. And you need that for proper processing. So now I'll bring that up to a full rolling boil, and then I'll set the timer for 15 minutes. So I'm super happy. My three jars that I reprocessed sealed. And so while that was reprocessing, I sliced up some more jalapenos and I sliced up some garlic so that I could pickle some jalapenos. But that's for another video. Now I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope if you are enjoying the Can Sanity videos that you subscribe to the YouTube channel. And please do go to cansanity.com and check out some more fantastic recipes. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Have a great day.